This video was requested by Patreon subscriber William Cross. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you. Ah, the franchise of Die Hard. Over the years, this series of films, well, at least the first three anyway, have brought me many moments of pure bliss. Today though, we're not talking about the movies. We are talking about the games. From the Japanese exclusive all the way up to the latest outing on the iOS. So kick back, take your shoes off and watch out for all the broken glass because these are the video games of Die Hard. The first game on the list is Die Hard for MS-DOS by Dynamics. The company developed a line of interactive movies including David Wolf Secret Agent and A-10 Tank Killer. They all featured 3D gameplay along with digitized stills to tell the story. A higher than normal budget was used for these games but the immersion was second to none. The game follows the plot of the movie very closely using a third person perspective. You have to make your way to the top of Nakatomi Plaza to disarm 40 terrorists. The game is, shall we say, inspired by Metal Gear Solid as you have to sneak around to take enemies out. You have to monitor the condition of John McClane's feet because the worse they get, the quicker you die. There is also a time limit that you have to contend with. Unfortunately, the game only uses 16 color EGA graphics, so they are a bit blocky. While the game and premise is interesting, in my opinion, it's just not very fun. The following year on the Commodore 64, Die Hard was released by Activision. This was one of the few games to feature the likeness of Bruce Willis. In every other game, the character of John McClane was changed to not resemble Bruce Willis. I don't know if the Commodore got away with it because of the low resolution or what. Now take the PC version and shrink it down to the good old Commodore and this is what you're left with. The viewpoint was switched to a side-scroller due to the limitations of the hardware, but this is essentially the same game right down to the same digitized cutscenes. This was very ambitious at the time and reviews were mostly positive across the board. There is a lot of loading times, but you sort of get used to it the more you play. Moving all the way over to the other side of the world is a Japanese-only die-hard game for the PC Engine. This was another game that used the likeness of Bruce Willis, but we are in Japan where copyright laws are a bit lackluster. This is a Commando slash Bloody Wolf clone that has almost nothing to do with the movie. The presentation is nice with large detailed sprites, but the first thing you notice is that the game starts outside of the building with you wandering around shooting people. I must have fallen asleep during the part where John McClane wades through a swamp to kill some bad guys. The controls are very stiff and it gets repetitive very quickly. Another pet peeve, you don't even face Hans Gruber at the end. You have to blow up a helicopter that is attacking you. I can see why this was available only in Japan. In 1991, Activision released Die Hard for the NES. This was based on the original PC version but with a top-down perspective instead. This was another game that was inspired by Metal Gear Solid and was considered an open world adventure. It was difficult to shoot the enemies because you could only fire in 8 directions. The enemy AI is also very cheap. The reviews for this game ranged from high to low but personally I did not like it. 1992 on the Amiga platform we were treated to Die Hard 2 Die Harder. This was released by Grand Slam Software and developed by one of the best software houses of the 80s and 90s, Tear Tags. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I could say that with a straight face but it just was not happening. This is basically an Operation Wolf clone which might seem like a bummer but is actually not too bad. You get to use the mouse to control the cursor which is always a plus. The sprites are nicely animated but the game is a bit short with only 5 levels of action. The music and sound effects are really well done. Early in 1996, Sega released Die Hard Arcade. This was released as Dynamite Decca in Japan with no association to the Die Hard franchise. Sega of Japan did not hold the license to the Die Hard franchise in its own country. The game is a fun Final Fight style brawler which was the first one to use 3D texture mapped polygon graphics. One or two players sees you fight multiple waves of endless enemies using a variety of weapons and your fists. 
you will also encounter quick time events. The plot revolves around you having to rescue the president's daughter, which is just a tad bit different from the movie. There was also a port to the Sega Saturn. Die Hard Trilogy was released in 1996 by Fox Interactive, initially for the PlayStation 1 but was later released for the Sega Saturn and Windows. You are getting three games in one, with the first one being based on Die Hard and is an early example of a third person shooter. You have to rescue the hostages and also defuse bombs in this level. The second one is based on Die Hard 2 and is a virtual cop clone which is essentially an on rail shooter. You are able to use any of the Sony Lycan accessories on this level. The third and my favorite is Die Hard with a Vengeance which is a crazy first person driving game. You have to disarm the bombs and make it from place to place before the time runs out. There is a ton of blood and gore in this game especially in this level which sees you running down pedestrians using your windshield wipers to clear the blood from the screen. All three games individually are minimalistic at best, however, put them all together and you have a blockbuster. The game was a huge hit and it also inspired a sequel. Die Hard Trilogy 2 was released in 2000 for the PlayStation 1. This game tells a brand new story with John McClane in Las Vegas. Once again there are three separate games similar to the first trilogy and once again we have driving and on real shooters similar to Virtual Cop and a third person shooter. You can choose to play each game individually or there is a movie setting which shows cutscenes and strings all the games together. The graphics are much better in this version and while the game is still fun to play it doesn't have as much bang for its buck as the first one. You do get to use the light guns just like the first game. 2002 brought us Die Hard Nakatomi Plaza. This game takes us back to the very first movie where John McClane is arriving at the hotel to meet his wife for a Christmas party. This is a first person shooter with you taking the role of McClane as he attempts to stop the terrorists and save his wife. The film is painstakingly recreated in video game form with a lot of the audio from the film reused in the game. Most of the film's main actors had sound alikes and re-recorded the dialogue from the movie with the exception of Reginald Bill Johnson who portrayed Officer Powell. It only received average reviews across the board but I enjoyed it quite a bit. It actually felt like you were John McClane in a Die Hard movie. In early 2003, Die Hard Vendetta was released for the GameCube and later the PS2 and Xbox. Many years have passed since his days in New York and John McClane is now a Los Angeles cop. The son of Hans Gruber is out to take revenge for what happened to his father. The game is a first person shooter which offers two unique modes of gameplay. The first one is stealth mode which allows you to sneak around and take out enemies just like Metal Gear Solid. The second one is hero time which allows you to slow down time and react quicker just like bullet time in the game Max Payne. The gameplay was well done but the problem is there just wasn't enough of it. It's still a pretty good game even 15 years later. In 2013, A Good Day to Die Hard was brought to iOS and the Android platforms. This is a freemium endless runner with very nice graphics and speed. And that's really about it. It's fun for what it is but it gets very repetitive very quickly. You can buy power-ups and other things but overall the game is just average at best. Just as I was wrapping up this video I came across a hidden gem. Die Hard 64 is an unreleased game by Fox Interactive which was set to be released in the early 2000s. The game was never officially announced but it had been rumored for quite some time with word of mouth spreading rapidly. While no official reason was given for its cancellation because the game was unannounced, the company's previous game Fox Sports College Hoops 99 failed to sell even with a massive marketing campaign. Take into account the high cost of cartridge production and you're given another reason not to release the game. Thankfully, some brave souls saved the game and dumped the ROM for all of us to enjoy. The game looks to be approximately 75% complete and is reminiscent of the Nintendo 64 game GoldenEye. There is even a 4 player deathmatch mode. The graphics are very well done and the speed is nice and smooth. With a few tweaks here and there, the finished game might have been a classic.
I hope you enjoyed the games of Die Hard. Sure, there are a couple of stinkers in there, but there are some really good ones as well. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below for more details. Every dollar helps, and I really do appreciate it. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my content. Also, hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.